Hey everyone, I'm Madison Jensen, and before I dive into my story, make sure to like and subscribe to follow my journey of breaking free from toxic family patterns and finding my true self. Trust me, you'll want to stick around for this wild ride. Living in our suburban house is like being trapped in a fast food joint that never closes. The smell of greasy burgers and cigarette smoke has seeped into every fabric of our furniture. Right now, I'm sitting on my bed, surrounded by hidden, healthy snacks. While downstairs, my dad Frank is yelling his usual dinner orders. I said get the family bucket with extra fries and make it snappy. We're starving here. That's my dad ordering our third takeout of the day. At 275 pounds, he believes bigger is always better. My stepmom Linda is nodding along, already clearing the coffee table of last night's pizza boxes to make room for tonight's feast. Madison, get down here this instant. Family dinner? I check my reflection in the mirror, 245 pounds staring back at me. My younger sister Ashley isn't doing any better at 230. We're both products of our environment, but lately, I've been feeling like I can't breathe. Coming? I shuffle downstairs, my heart racing from just those few steps. Look what I got us. Triple cheeseburgers, extra large fries, and those chocolate shakes you girls love. Dad announces proudly, spreading out the feast. Ashley's eyes light up, but I notice her tugging at her tight shirt, uncomfortable. Linda's already diving in, careful not to spill any sauce on her designer sweater. The only thing she really cares about keeping clean in this house. Actually, Dad, I was thinking maybe we could try cooking sometime, like real food. The room goes silent. Dad's face turns red, not from the food this time. Real food? What do you call this? This is good American food. Your mother never complained about my choices. Frank, honey, just let her eat. Linda mumbles through a mouthful of fries. Always the peacekeeper when it serves her. I pick at my burger, remembering this morning's doctor's visit. Pre-diabetic, she'd said, looking concerned. You need to make some changes, Madison. My phone buzzes. Another notification from FitLife a fitness channel I've been secretly following. Their latest video about breaking unhealthy family cycles hits too close to home. Who you texting? Better not be those health nut friends from work, Dad growls. Just a meme, Dad. I lie, shoving my phone back in my pocket. Ashley catches my eye, silently asking if I'm okay. She started noticing the changes in me, the hidden vegetables in my room, the early morning walks I take before anyone wakes up. Remember Cousin Betty? Dad launches into his favorite cautionary tale. Started all that diet nonsense, ended up in the hospital. That's what happens when you deny yourself good food. She ended up in the hospital because she had a gallbladder attack from eating like this. I mutter under my breath. What was that? Nothing, Dad. Sitting in Dr. Thompson's office, staring at my lab results, my world shifts. Your blood sugar levels are dangerously high, Madison. You're on the verge of type 2 diabetes. At 24, this is serious. Those words echo in my head as I walk home, each step feeling heavier than the last. But for the first time, they push me forward instead of dragging me down. That evening, I start cleaning out my room, finding old candy wrappers under my bed. Ashley peeks in, curious about the rustling. What are you doing? Making changes, Ash. Want to help? She slips in, closing the door quietly. Dad's downstairs ordering Chinese. Again. I bought some strawberries. Want to try? Over the next few weeks, I start waking up at 5 a.m. before Dad's thundering footsteps fill the house. One morning, Ashley joins me. Can I walk with you? We make it around the block, both breathless but grinning. Back home, I show her how to make overnight oats in our room but our secret health kick doesn't last long. Dad storms into my room one evening, waving a receipt he found in my jacket. Protein powder? Vegetables? What is this garbage? It's called groceries, Dad. Real food. Real food? You trying to say I don't feed you right? I stand my ground, heart pounding. The doctor says I'm pre-diabetic. Doctors, always trying to scare people into their fancy diets. That night at dinner, I bring down my prepared grilled chicken and salad instead of joining their pizza party. 
Dad's face turns purple. What's that supposed to be? My dinner. Not in my house. In this family, we eat together. The same food. Dad, please. I'm just trying to be healthy. He grabs my plate, throwing it against the wall. Lettuce leaves scatter like confetti. You ungrateful little... Think you're better than us now? Linda keeps eating her pizza, pretending not to see. Ashley starts crying. Either eat what this family eats or get out. Dad, stop. Ashley sobs. You want to choose rabbit food over your family? Fine, pack your things. I look at Ashley, tears streaming down her face. Then at Linda, methodically wiping her mouth with a napkin. I choose my health, I say, my voice surprisingly steady. I choose life. Then get out. You have one hour. Behind me, the door slams shut, but somehow I feel lighter than I have in years. You can stay as long as you need, Taylor says, helping me settle into her spare room. My best friend since high school has always been my rock, and now she's literally my shelter. Three weeks into my new life, I'm down 20 pounds and working at Power Fitness Gym. Between cleaning equipment and checking memberships, I sneak in workouts whenever I can. One evening, Taylor's brother Mike rushes in, still wearing his insurance company suit. You'll never believe what crossed my desk today. Your dad's name kept coming up in our fraud investigation. What do you mean? Several elderly clients reported missing funds. All their policies were handled by Frank Jensen. My phone buzzes, a text from Ashley. Can we meet? Emergency. At the mall food court, Ashley looks thinner, worried. Dad's been acting weird. I overheard him arguing with someone about payments, so I checked my college fund account. Madison, it's almost empty. What? That's impossible. Mom's life insurance was supposed to... He's taken almost everything. Said the market was bad, but I saw gambling receipts in his jacket. Working at the gym becomes my sanctuary. My transformation starts attracting attention especially from clients struggling with their own family dynamics. Your story really resonates with people, Rebecca, a new client, mentions during her session. I'm a journalist, and I'd love to feature you in a piece about breaking toxic cycles. I appreciate that, but actually, what interests me more is the financial abuse angle. I've been investigating insurance fraud cases targeting seniors. My hands freeze mid-rep. What exactly do you know? Several complaints about missing funds all traced back to one agent. Your father's been running a Ponzi scheme, takes money from new clients to pay old ones while pocketing the difference for gambling. Those clients, they're retired people? Living on fixed incomes? Some lost their life savings. More pieces fall into place. Taylor's brother brings documents showing irregular transactions. Rebecca interviews affected clients. Ashley sends photos of bank statements she finds in Dad's office. The evidence is overwhelming, Rebecca says. My expose goes live next week. Will the victims get their money back? Insurance fraud is federal. Once this breaks, investigators will freeze his assets, including any accounts he's dipped into. I text Ashley. Pack a bag, keep it hidden. When everything breaks, you're coming to stay with me. The clock ticks toward Rebecca's publication date. Soon, Dad's carefully constructed house of cards will collapse, and this time, I'll be ready to catch Ashley when it does. Breaking news. Local insurance agent charged in million-dollar fraud scheme. The headline screams across my phone screen. Rebecca's investigation hit like a tornado. Ashley calls immediately. Linda's packing her bags. She says she's done. Dad's been screaming at the TV all morning. Get your things. You're coming to stay with me now. The next few weeks bring a cascade of consequences. Linda files for divorce. Dad loses his insurance license. Gambling debts surface from three different casinos. Six months later, Ashley and I are spotting each other at the gym when Mike calls. Your dad took a plea deal, three years minimum. After the call, Ashley wipes her eyes. Remember when we could barely climb stairs? Now look at us, both certified trainers. The wellness center opens on a sunny spring morning. Jensen Sisters Fitness reads the sign. Our mother's maiden name reclaimed. Ready for the group photo? Ashley calls out, surrounded by our retreat participants, all survivors of toxic relationships. Today marks a new chapter, I tell the group. 
You're not victims anymore. You're warriors. Dad's voicemail icon blinks as I pose with Ashley and our clients. I delete it without listening. Next retreat's already full, Ashley grins. Looking at our thriving community, I realize Dad's cruelty gave me an unexpected gift. The strength to break cycles and help others do the same. We're done with toxic people, I hug Ashley. Our lives are about healing now. Behind us, our wellness center glows like a beacon in the sunset, while somewhere a prison cell door closes on the past we've left behind. What would you do if a toxic family member who destroyed your life and hurt others tried to come back into your life claiming they've changed? Would you give them another chance? Or like Madison, would you protect your peace and choose yourself? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you've been through a similar journey of breaking free from toxic family patterns, you're not alone. Your story matters. Don't forget to like this video if it resonated with you, and hit subscribe to join our community of survivors who are rewriting their stories. Remember, sometimes the family you choose is stronger than the family you're born into.